Hi everyone and welcome to Let's Try Blockhood. So, this is a really interesting game that caught my attention recently. It just entered early access and it's almost like a city builder without an actual city. The developer describes it as a neighborhood building simulator and it's kind of like a combination of a city builder and a puzzle game. There are a lot of tutorials. I've not really played the game at all yet, so we will do some tutorials, I think. There are challenges, there's sandbox mode, you can play around with terrain options, and there are tutorials. The game is in early access right now, so I assume there will be more in the future. But yeah, let's do the tutorial, because I don't actually know how to play this just yet. We can find out together. Create and delete. Welcome to tutorial 1. In this series of tutorials you will learn how to play Blockhood. Your first task is to create a block. Go to the create panel in the menu below. There's the create panel. And we can place an elevator. We can zoom in with the mouse wheel. We can pan the camera around with W, S, A and D. And we can rotate it around. Alright then. So, let's place the elevator. Oh, we have to hold the left mouse button, alright. Fair enough. And then delete. Next. Well, that was quick. <laughs> that partially explains why there are 12 tutorials. Because that wasn't much of a tutorial that just showed you how to do one action. Probably a little bit excessive to have that as a separate tutorial, but alright. So, next up... Yeah, rotate. I already did that, but alright. If you say so. We can move up and down. Oh, that slice up. And that was tutorial too! <laughs> alright, fine. I see how it is. Alright, maybe we'll get to do something more exciting. Go to the production tab in the inventory. Select a solar panel and create it on the terrain. Alright. So there's the solar panel. You actually have to hold the left mouse button to build things from the looks of it. And now open the resources panel. Which one is that? There's no actual tooltip from the looks of it. Oh yeah, right here. Analysis. Onwards. Okay, we got a bigger area to play around with. In this tutorial you will learn the consequences of resources. Let's plant three trees and see what happens. Alright. Let's do that. The game has a pretty interesting art style, which is what caught my attention initially. And the concept sounded really interesting as well. So let's go into inspect mode. We can also use the shortcut. Decay. If you hover over the block, you will see the inputs and outputs. There they are. Our trees don't have any water. A block only produces outputs if it has inputs. Otherwise it decays. Now let's use one of the data modes to see how the trees are doing. Alright, data viz. Decay data. Blocks will gradually turn red when they cannot produce resources. Blocks might eventually die from decay. Press the data modes button again to go back to the main view. Alright. Look into the inventory for a block that can produce water as an output. Create a block in the terrain. Alright then. Well, that produces water. <laughs> now go and check the resource window and wait to get free units of water. Alright then. We can hover over it, I assume. Yep. We can see the rate of production. I don't think we can speed it up. Or maybe we can? I don't think so. One more. And then we'll place some trees, I assume. 
Now you are ready to create some trees. Trees will create fresh air, if they have water. Try to produce fresh air. There. And now if we hover over that, it's producing fresh air. Come on. Produce that fresh air. Go, go, go. Leisure is the other output as well. Yeah, we are amazing. You heard them. Next. Accessibility. Try to create a well in the center of the terrain. Alright. Now go to the data modes. Notice that the well is pink. This means the well is not accessible. Try creating corridors between the well and the edge. Okay then. Like so. Notice the well is now blue. This means the well is accessible. Accessible blocks can produce resources. Wait for it to produce free units of water. Alright then. So I do know that in this game you actually build vertically. So you will be able to build on many different levels up. We didn't see that here just yet, because these are the very basics. But that's pretty much what this game is. Great, you can try rotating a block by going into inspect mode. Or once you are highlighting a block, press R, okay. Oh, can we rotate an existing block? Yeah, alright then. Connectivity. Create a small apartment in the middle of the terrain. There we go. Now inspect mode by right clicking. Hover over the apartment you created and you will see a red arrow. Yep, we can see the arrow. This is the access point of the block where the apartment has a door. You will need to provide access to this block through this orientation. Try rotating the block. Yep. And build a corridor. Alright, let's do that. Structured Corridor 5. If you say so. Do we have to rotate that? I'm pretty sure we do. Yeah, we do. There. This is tutorial 8 and there were 12 from what I remember. Try to produce fresh air by creating trees and the well. Remember to make blocks accessible. Alright, easy enough. We know what to do. So let's grab a well first. Which category was that in? Yeah, right here. Place it like so. And we need a corridor. Let's check that map mode. There it is. And we can check data viz or whatever it was. Yep, access data. It's pink. Is there a shortcut for that? Yeah, there is. Eight. There, and now we need some trees. There. Six, seven, eight, yeah, I'm just checking the shortcuts. Alright. That's one. Two and three doesn't lead to anything, apparently. That's a little bit strange. Yeah, two, three and four isn't a shortcut. But six is. Interesting. Now, let's produce some electricity. Yes, let's. And what do we do? Yep, solar panel. But where's the sun? <laughs> Water tower, well, windmill. Windmill might be a little bit better.
there we got the windmill. Let's rotate the camera a bit. We can place it over here. It needs money as input, apparently. Okay then. Might be worth checking the inputs. Yeah, the solar panel doesn't require any input at all. So maybe we should delete one of these and get a solar panel instead. Now you are ready for people to inhabit a home. Notice that an apartment needs water, electricity, fresh air and leisure. You should have that now, so go ahead and create an apartment. Try to produce labor. Labor is a key to allow other blocks to become productive. Alright then. Might be worth connecting this a little bit better. But let's grab an apartment then. So we can build vertically. Should work like this. We'll check if they are actually connected like this. Okay. And now we can go into access data. No, they are not connected like this. Alright, that's fine. We'll probably have to demolish the windmill or whatever. I guess so, yeah. No problem. Oh yeah, where's the actual door? Might be worth checking that. Need to hover over it. Yeah, we just have to rotate it. That tree needs to go. Relocate it a bit. So, corridor again. And another tree. And now we can rotate them. As in the apartments. Yeah, they can be connected directly to the well, from the looks of it. They don't have to be connected to the actual corridor. Well is enough. The second level isn't going to work though. We need to demolish that, I guess. Blockhood is all about ecology and interdependence. Try the next tutorial for more advanced content. Vertical connectivity. Some blocks allow the construction of other blocks on top of them. These are mainly the building blocks, but try experimenting to see which blocks allow you to build upwards. Try creating two small apartments on top of each other. Alright then, well we already did that in the previous tutorial. When we weren't supposed to, I guess. So there we are. And now we can check connectivity. That's 8. Yep, I'll just use the shortcut because that's so much faster. And now they are not connected. So what do we do to actually connect them? Good question. I have no idea. They didn't tell us what we're supposed to do to connect them. So I don't know. I mean, we can build the corridor like so. Oh, we need an elevator or something, do we? Probably. Alright, there was an elevator somewhere in there. There it is. So, elevator. And I assume that's going to work. Possibly. Back to connectivity. There, that works. So, you happy? So, the game crashed on me right there, which is not a brilliant start. But let's go back into tutorial 9. We got two more tutorials. And then we can check out sandbox or challenge mode, we'll see. Alright, so we already know this part. So try creating two small apartments on top of each other. We already did that. There. Doesn't look like he's happy enough with that. There we go. Okay, now notice that if you go into the access data tab, which is 8, the upper apartment is not accessible. We need to fix that and provide access to all blocks, otherwise they will decay. Turn on access data. We already did that. Yeah, we already did that. 
I guess it wasn't happy with the shortcut or something. I don't know. Yeah, it wasn't happy with the shortcut. It actually wanted you to click this. Nice. Now we will need to create an elevator that will provide access we need. Yep, we already know that part. Build two elevator blocks. We shall do that. On top of each other. And then we have to rotate the blocks. Like so. There we go. Please don't crash again. Well, it doesn't look like it's fully satisfied with that. Well then. It's clearly not satisfied with this. I mean, we can always just go into the next tutorial without completing this one. We clearly know how this works now, so... I don't know. Well, he's clearly not happy. For some reason. I don't know. I think it wants the elevator right here. For some silly reason. It seems a little bit strange. Well, it's connected. I guess we'll just go into the next tutorial manually. Okay, next. That's the last tutorial. Okay, synergies. Try creating a corridor that divides the terrain in two. Okay, then. In this tutorial, you will learn how blocks can change productivity based on synergies. Okay, add a small apartment that is connected to the corridor. We shall do that. Create a dense tree. Notice that a blue arrow appears telling you that the synergy of the small apartment has increased. You can hover over the block in inspect mode to see the amount of synergy you just obtained. So there's our synergy. Let's see. Yeah, synergy plus one. Yeah, it wants you to click inspect mode instead of just using shortcuts and mouse buttons. Now build a factory also adjacent to the small apartment. Alright then. That's not exactly what I wanted. Notice a red arrow telling you that you just created a negative synergy. Hover over the small apartment to see its synergy again. Minus 2. You will notice that the synergy decreased. Press the inspect mode and hover over the small apartment. Yep, we did that. So delete the factory. There, we deleted it. And that's that. Try the challenges. Alright, let's try the challenges. To actually do something more than just a tutorial. There is sandbox mode. Maybe we'll check that out later. Okay, so let's do the first challenge. It's all about the water. We need to obtain 600 units of water. Should be a bit more interesting than the tutorial. So, yep, this just repeats what we already saw. Alright. Let's have a look then. What do we have available? Retail shop. Outputs money. Needs labor, electricity and consumers. Large apartments. Output labor or youth. Grey water, organic waste and consumers. Okay. And I assume we'll be able to turn grey water into actual water. Or can we? Yes, we can. Looks good. Can we use algae as input? Anywhere? At all? I don't think so. Not in any of the buildings that we actually have available. Okay, that's fine. So, what do we want to do first? Well, first of all, we probably need a corridor. I would say. We definitely need a corridor. We'll just build that real quick. And we need power, obviously. So... Let's just build some solar panels first. Like this. Just rotate the camera a bit. So that's our power. We need some trees for fresh air and leisure. And then we need apartments. 
we can do something like this. Actually, that should be fine and we'll get apartments between the trees. That will give them more synergies, I assume. It should. So one over here. One over here. And we should probably grab an elevator because this is not enough space. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of the game, to build vertically. Do we actually have access to the elevator? No, we don't, do we? I think it was in this category. No, this one. No, we don't actually have access to elevator. Alright, that's fine. Be that way. Okay, we don't actually need all these corridors then, do we? Well, not really. If anything, we should demolish the trees. Because we need more space. So get rid of these trees. We need the farm thingy. Hmm. Right, let's do this slightly differently, actually. Demolish this. And we'll get some corridors. We can pause the game, but that just opens the menu. That's not very useful. You can't actually build in that mode, it seems. We can do something like this. And then we'll get trees over here. Just to maximize the space that we have. We don't actually need all these corridors, I don't think so. And we got them anyway. Get some trees. There, so that should give them synergy. Bonus, yep, plus one synergy. And... Well, we will get fresh air, but now we need water, which means... We need the farm. We can also build a water tower. Might as well do that. And the farm over here. What about synergies for the farm? I wonder if you would get positive synergy by placing it next to a tree or a solar plant? Probably not. Okay, so is it working? No, not yet. But the trees are working just fine. There, it's working. Let's open the analysis window. So we should be producing water. Can we speed up the game or something like that? I don't think so. I don't think we can. Well, it's working just fine. We are getting labor, grey water, organic waste and consumers. So, we can also build the retail shop, which will give us money. And that will fuel the water tower. And we can build more water towers, because, well, that's the main goal here. Get 600 water, you know. This might be a bit of an overkill, but it's probably fine. And we used pretty much every block that we had available. We can build a large apartment, I suppose. This is the last spot that we actually have. There. And we used everything. Now we wait to accumulate 600 water. That's going to take a while, actually. <laughs> yeah, it will. Okay. I don't think we can speed the game up. No, we cannot. At least I don't see a way to do so. Let's check the keyboard shortcuts. Nope. I guess we'll have to wait then. We need 600, right? Yep, 600. And we can't build elevators in this challenge. That's disappointing. This is probably not the most efficient setup. In fact, this is definitely not the most efficient setup. Not even close. We don't need some of these corridors at all. In fact, let's just remove some of these corridors. Like this one. In the middle, we definitely do not need that. And we can place more trees for better synergy bonuses. Like this. So that's plus two synergy bonus. We can probably get some kind of synergies for the water towers. Well, that's the accessibility map mode. 171. 
So is this the only way? Just wait? I think so. I'll just make a quick cut, I think, unless we want to change something. Our water is going up, but not very quickly. Any problems here? Nope, looks fine. We got all the inputs. We are actually losing electricity though, and the leisure is going down. So I guess we should get more leisure. And we need more electricity. We can replace the solar panels with something more efficient now. So let's do that. Remove. And we can get a windmill that's more efficient but requires money, which isn't a problem. We are generating money. Or at least we should be. We are losing money right now, but we should be generating money. Rescate display exact values. Oh, that's much more helpful. Yeah, this is much, much better. Minus 0 0.01 on electricity. We'll just replace the other solar panel. Yep, sounds good. Replace that with a windmill. We might need more money though. Which means we need another retail shop. Probably replace one of the water towers. I suppose. Alright, fine. And get the retail shop. There. Now we don't have enough consumers. Can we replace some labor? I don't think so, no. It will go down too much. We could replace one of the trees, but do we have enough inputs for another large apartment? I suppose we can always remove some of the roads. So this is more or less a combination of a city building game and a puzzle game. That's exactly how it plays. It's an interesting concept. Okay, minus 0 0.03 electricity. And we need more leisure. We should just demolish some of these corridors. They are obviously not needed. Like this section is completely unnecessary. Same with this one. And we can place a solar panel. That's going to be enough. There. And we need more leisure, which means we should get more trees. There. Is that going to be enough? Not quite. Okay, what else can we remove? Can we remove some of these roads? I think so. It should be fine to remove this one. Yeah, it's kind of hard to select exact tiles sometimes. Okay, these aren't connected. Okay, that's better. What do we need again? More ledger. Alright, fine. So, another dense tree. Actually, hold on. Regular tree will give us a better ledger output. Yeah, just not as much fresh air, but more ledger. And it doesn't require as much water. Okay, we can replace some of the other trees in that case. We can certainly do that. We need everything to be in the positives. Why is this blinking? It's connected. Minus 0 0.08. Can we remove some more roads? Corridors. Not sure. I don't think so. What can we replace? Can we replace one of the retail shops? I think so. No, we won't have enough money then, damn it. Okay, fine. Can we replace one of the apartments? Like this one in the middle. Then we won't have enough consumers. Really? Minus 0 
Minus 0 0.01. Come on now. I miscalculated that one. Large apartment again. So we need more leisure. We should just replace the trees then. That should be fine. And this one. We should have enough everything. Nothing should be in the negatives after this, I don't think so. Yep, we got enough everything. Just barely enough fresh air, but hey, we're not losing it. And we almost have enough water. So that's our fully functional block with everything in the green. And that was just with one level since we didn't have access to the elevator. And you can build vertically a lot. And I think the maximum possible size of the block is 20 by 20 right now. And this is 5 by 5. We can check in sandbox mode settings once this finishes and it should finish soon. 548. So that's the first challenge pretty much done. Come on, give me that 600. There was probably a more efficient way to do this. In fact, there was definitely a more efficient way to do this. But we did it, that's what matters, right? Alright, I made a quick cut to get to 600. And there we are, we finished challenge 1. Let's go back to the main menu. I want to see what's the maximum possible size in sandbox mode. Let's have a look. 20 by 20 and height is also 20. So that's quite a lot of blocks. Okay then. Zero one, not sure what that's all about. I guess there will be more sandbox mods in the future because this is an early access game right now. What are some of the other challenges? Obtain more than 10 units of knowledge, 500 money, fish and vegetables, electricity and less than 100 sickness, create bread and less than 50 units of wheat. I'll just go through these challenges really quickly. Create 40 housing units, hotel rooms, factories, and there's difficulty. Advanced, advanced, intermediate, easy. Alright, so that was Block Code. It's an interesting little game. I quite enjoy the concept, even though I'm not that good at puzzle games. But it's one of the more unique games of this type that I've seen recently. So that's going to be it for this Let's Try. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.